Welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Today's review is going to be, well, I think you're going to find this very fascinating. Last fall, I started buying these, well, they're called remote doorbells. And I use them as a security system and they just operate flawlessly. Uh, a lot of people, when they're thinking about a security system for their, uh, say, their garage or their shed or their house or anything like that, the first thing they think about is cameras. And the one thing I've noticed is cameras are completely useless in many situations. I'm going to show you exactly where I put uh, these door alarms. They're remote uh, RFI kind of uh, sensors. And uh, I think they're just terrific. And I got them all under $30. And uh, I'm going to show you them. They're on the bench right here. And we're going to go over some of the different features. And, uh, you know, I, I think this is far better than a video camera because I've, I, I've noticed in the media there's so many people, take for instance, got their vehicle stolen or something stolen outside and they've got great video of it and the people are wearing a mask or how do you identify these people, right? Now, these, these uh, alarms here, oh yeah, they get your attention big time, not the burglar's attention, but yours. So let's go over the bench. Let's take a look. Well, here they are right here. And this is the first one I bought and I got two in there. And then I bought one of these. And I think these are far superior depending on uh, your location. And this is the exact same one. And there's the manufacturer there. Now I bought these off of uh, Amazon. I'm not an Amazon affiliate. I, I don't have any sponsorships on my channel or anything like that. But I mean, if you just Google these, uh, look on Amazon wireless doorbell. You'll find all kinds and sometimes they're called uh, Driveway alarms that kind of stuff Now these looks like they're mainly designed to be an indoor use uh, And that's not exactly how I use them, but I'm going to show you and this one here this system right here well if we take a look uh, And it's good for up to about 70 meters in distance and these ones here, which I think are a better unit, are good for maximum 500 feet or 150 meters. And I paid under $30 for these two. And this one here, I paid uh, $19, but it was from the Amazon warehouse. And uh, I guess somebody had returned them. So I'm going to show you where I have all these and how incredible they are. But the first thing I have to do is I have to take you to where this unit here and these ones here this is the uh, trip mechanism so if somebody crosses the beam here it'll set off the alarm and this is the alarm here this is the alarm here and this is the alarm here and I'm going to show you where I have them and then we're going to go through the procedure of showing you what they sound like because they all just sound like you go into a department store they just go ding dong well I didn't want that right I wanted something that was gonna like wake me up so uh, let's go and see where they wake me up okay so here's the first unit I'm in my bedroom and I've labeled it steel shed so when that is tripped this goes off for my steel shed so let's go to the next one now so here we are down here and there's the uh, second one and that is for my garage and my wooden shed. So that's it right there. And that's the, uh, the different unit. The one that doesn't actually uh, go as far as the other units. But uh, this one right here works awesome. Because you know what? The maximum distance I'm going is about maybe 70 feet. So let's go on to the last one. Okay, so this is on the other bedroom wall. And uh, this is only for my driveway. So if somebody walks up my driveway, this thing goes off. And what I did was I put it on a timer so that it only engages at midnight and then it shuts off around six o'clock in the morning because I'm up and down going back and forth in the driveway all the time. And uh, I really didn't want this thing to, the alarm to be going off constantly. So I put this one on a timer. Well, if you look down there, there's my, right on my porch. And uh, you can see I just put a little wooden box there and I got a couple of uh, 
fasteners and some cleats just to hold it on so it didn't move because I didn't want the wind to move the box because if the box moves well it's going to set the alarm off. So uh, on these units you can either have two AA batteries or you can plug it into a USB. Now they don't give you the charge block but I have the charge blocks so I wired them up using the USB so I never run out of uh, you know out of batteries if you had it on batteries so I don't know how long the batteries would last in these but in the reviews I read about six months so let's take a look at the front of this and see what the purpose of this is so there's the uh, back of my truck and that's where I usually park it all the time there and the beam would go all the way over here it's up high enough so I'm not going to catch like a raccoon or anything and the distance between myself and the uh, the sensor well, they usually go about 25 feet maximum. So if we just take a look here, let's just take a look and see how I, I engineered all this. So I just got like a regular box and inside there is the sensor and you can see that there's lights going off there. Well, you can actually program that so the lights don't go on, but I just left it like that. And then in the background inside, I just got it wired up in there with a USB block and uh, just fasten it in there and then I ran the wire all the way along from here over to here and it just plugs into the receptacle there okay so now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you where the one in the garage is I'll show you the one where the metal shed is and the wooden shed okay so as we walk over here I thought where would be a logical place to put that sensor that wouldn't be tripped all the time that would just drive you crazy because I'm always going inside of the shop and the last thing I want is that thing inside the house driving the wife nuts so I put it behind here and that's where it is and I just got it wired in there and it's uh, you just attach your uh, USB cable it does not come with a cable you just attach your USB cable to it so there's no batteries and uh, that's it right there. So when I come in the, in the garage, that's closed so it doesn't bother me anything. So what I do is when I first come in, is I close this so it doesn't go off for the day. And uh, I'm fine. And then when I, when I leave, or say I got the front garage door open, and I just want to make sure nobody walks into the garage, well, I've had that go off three times now when I've been inside the house and it was a squirrel in the garage and that thing went off and uh, well nobody came inside just the squirrel so let's take a look at the uh, wooden shed and I'll show you the setup I have for that okay so let's go in the wooden shed here and uh, I'll just show you the setup here and uh, there it is right there so you know as soon as you come in this thing goes off and you know this this one is not on the timer only on the in the driveway is the one the tire the rest they all go off that's why I've got a door in the garage that stops a sensor from activating but uh, it's not often I go into this shed and uh, if we take a look at the distance uh, let's just take a look here so here we are here's the bedroom right here so it's about 70 feet and every time I come in yeah this thing goes off and I can hear it my windows open there and I can hear that thing going off in there so and uh, here's the steel shed let's go inside the steel shed and I'll show you exactly where how I got that one set up okay so we're gonna go in the steel shed and I'll tell you something as soon as I walk past the doorways here it always goes off so let's just go inside and let's just take a look here and there it is and uh, there's the sensor right there See it? See it going on with the lights there? It'll just keep on going off and on whenever it notices any movement. And there's the USB cable going down. And I got it hooked up to my electrical supply there. And this works flawlessly. So to attach this to the steel shed, all I did was use some of that uh, double-sided uh, Velcro sticky tape. I screwed this to a, to a wooden block and uh, I can just pull this right off anytime I want but I didn't want to put uh, holes through the shed to screw it into right but anyway you can fasten it is fine now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the house 
and uh, I'm gonna go by here I'll have the camera on so you can hear what this sounds like and uh, I got different notes for different uh, locations so I got three of them sensors they all have three different notes and uh, you know this is the the ideal thing because somebody does open these shed doors and walk inside guess what I'm getting woken up okay you ready I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna walk inside that steel shed Well, what do you think? I guarantee you that wakes you up in the middle of the night. And uh, like I said before, what's the use of having a camera when somebody could be out there doing God knows what and you got a great photography of them and all your stuff is gone, right? So, I mean, I think for like under $30, man, I mean, I've had them, like I say, uh, since last fall and they work flawlessly. Now, it's in a different atmosphere than, say, if somebody wanted to locate them, say, outside, like within 25 feet, if you've got branches going back and forth, well, this thing's going to go off like, a, like crazy all the time. So you have to put it into a location where there's nothing within the beam that's going to actually set it off. So it's great for like a, a driveway and that kind of thing. But I would, well, they're not really set up to be outdoors that much. So I would put them like in a little wooden box, kind of hide them a bit. And... Uh, you know, when you put it inside of a box, the field of view on the sensor is a lot less now, right? It doesn't spread sideways, and you can turn the sensor in any direction you want. And, uh, you know, if you just got it just pointing straight ahead, anything walks by that beam, well, you know, the alarm's going to go off. And, uh, of course, if you've got lots of moose and deer in your area, well, it's going to go off quite a bit if you've got lots going up and down your driveway, right? So the location is the best and how you're going to operate it. I mean, for a lot of people, what they do is they put it higher up and have it pointing down so it doesn't go across your road, maybe down the road. So if a car comes in, you'll hear this inside your house. And, you know, for 500 feet for $30 or less, I mean, I think it's a, a great product. Uh, I recommend it myself because... I've used it now since the last fall and uh, I haven't had no like false alarms or anything like that except if I got a squirrel in the garage that thing will go off big time and uh, I think for most people when they're thinking about an alarm well this is great for even even if you have children if you put it up like in your hallway so that you know if the kids get up in the middle of the night or something well you'll know right uh, you know, and, and you know, it's great for them kind of situations or, uh, you know, anybody in your driveway or at your lot or, you know, it, it's such a, a nice remote thing. The only thing is you have to have electrical supply at the other end, you know, so it's not all battery operated. One has to be plugged into a 120 volt circuit. So thanks for joining me here today. I hope you uh, thought that this was a, a good item to review. I think it's a, a great item and, uh, you know, maybe it could serve your purposes where you are for a little better security than just relying solely on video footage from, say, a security camera. So thanks for joining me here today. If you haven't seen this uh, channel before, you're welcome to subscribe. Come back again and see some unique products and some unique reviews. Cheers.